This is Macmillan Hall where I have chemistry classes and biochemistry this semester on Tuesdays and Thursdays. One of the many reasons that I chose Brown is because we have something called shopping period. If you've never heard of shopping period, it's the first two weeks of every semester in which students are encouraged to sit in on any of the classes that they're interested in. From a secret history of toilets to courses on biochemical pathways, there's definitely something that will interest you with the open curriculum. The whole point of shopping period is to get students to really commit to classes that they're genuinely interested in with professors that they'll learn well from. It's low commitment, so you're not confined to any of your classes that you register you're not confined to any of the courses that you pre-registered for. You get to really explore your classes before settling on four or five that you really want to take. First piece of advice I have for you is to set up a four-year plan. This definitely does not have to be rigid, but it's really important to set up a general framework for your classes. As a pre-med, I know I'm going to have to take things like Orgo 1, Orgo 2, Biochemistry, Physics, so I have those courses already lined up in my four-year plan. Now with one slot out of the way for your semester, you can look at courses that are in your intended concentration or if you've already declared things that are in your major. When I was a freshman, I was deciding between public health and health and human biology, so I made sure to take one class from each department so that I wouldn't get behind if I chose either track. Always prioritize classes that are prerequisites for other classes because you want to get them out of the way as early as you can so you can take more interesting upper divisions. But if you're a freshman and you have no idea what you want to take or what career you want to pursue, make sure to take courses from a broad scope of fields. So whether it's CS, philosophy, math, literary arts, ultimately you want to try and get an introduction into any field that you're interested in. Introductory classes are, contrary to popular belief, not really classes that will accurately reflect what the department is like. It's definitely something I struggled with, but if you want to get a sense of how a department or a field is like, talk to the professors, look at the upper div classes and see if you're interested. And if you're deciding between two different types of fields or introductory classes, pick the one with the more interesting possible upper divisions that you can take. So summary of tip number one, load up that spreadsheet. So after you've penciled in your requirements, now's the fun part. You're at Brown and you can finally explore the open curriculum. So you can fill out the rest of your two or three slots with pretty much anything that you want to take. The only gen ed requirement that we really have is a writ requirement. This can be fulfilled in so many different ways. Personally, I fulfilled my first writ requirement in a class called Science and Social Controversy. It's really important to take advantage of these one to two slots where you can take anything you want because these are the courses that will make you interesting and broaden your perspective on life. So at this point, just look through all of the possible departments that you're interested in and add courses to your cart that you'd potentially want to shop. Once you've gotten all the courses that you're interested in, you want to cut it down to about 10 that you're going to really shop on the first few days of class. I find that over 10, which I usually do, can be really, really overwhelming. After the first few days of class, you'll have a pretty good idea of which classes you really want to drop and probably end up with about five or six to choose from. Oh wow, I feel like I have so much power. Part three is pre-registration. Now, if you've made it this far into the video, I'm gonna give you a really valuable top secret tip that I really should not be sharing on the internet because now everyone's gonna register for classes that are capped before me. But 
a little bird told me that if you go incognito and then register your courses, it actually goes faster and you're more likely to get into those CAP classes. The goal of pre-registration is to sign up for classes that have CAPs, which means that they only take a certain number of students, and sign up for lab sections and discussion sections that will work for your schedule. You want to register for the most classes that you can with CAPS, so if you're only allowed to register for five classes during pre-registration, make sure you register with all five slots. That way you'll have as many options as you can. Don't even bother registering for classes that are lectures or are uncapped unless they have a lab section. Hold tight, hold tight. The last part of this video is about narrowing down your classes. Pick a class that you've always been interested in but have never really brought yourself to actually take. There is no class that's a throwaway class. I genuinely believe you can gain value from any class that you take, whether it is on toilets or the philosophy of life. If you're in STEM, maybe take a class in poetry. You never know what you might like. A more practical tip is to categorize by difficulty and also type of work that you'll be doing. There are classes that are reading and writing heavy, classes that involve a lot of problem sets, memorization, and more creative classes that are a little bit more low pressure. In terms of difficulty, I tend to take one class that will be very challenging, one class that is moderate to challenging, another class that is moderately challenging, and one class that is more creative or low pressure. And of course, I like to balance the type of work that is being done in each class. So for example, this semester I'm taking one course that's super memorization heavy, two courses that are reading and writing heavy, and one class that is still sort of memorization but a little bit less difficult than my most challenging class. Last semester I took Organic Chemistry 2, which was my most challenging class, Physiology, which was moderately challenging, Introduction to Public Health, which was more moderate, and Digital World, which was more creative and low pressure. I find that when I have classes with a one to two hour gap in between, I am never productive in those times. Whether you have morning classes or afternoon slash night classes, try to have your classes more compact and back to back to minimize the time that you're wasting in between classes. But if you're still deciding and it's down to convenience of your schedule versus the professor that's teaching it, I would honestly choose the better professor. That being said, if you have a really great internship opportunity and it conflicts with the class with the better professor, then perhaps the schedule in which you have more convenient classes but slightly less interesting professors is the better option for you. Alright guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you found this four step guide at least a little bit helpful in choosing your classes and getting through shopping period. It's a really stressful time and I know it seems like I have my life together on camera but trust me, this week has been a logistical nightmare. <laughs> Feel free to shoot me a message on Instagram or leave a comment down below. I'll be answering questions or concerns or just be chatting with you guys and it's a good time. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye!